Hello everyone. Today is the 20th of January. Over much of the last year, we have learnt a lot about waiting. Waiting for the end of lockdown, we're back in that place again. Waiting for the pandemic to be over, so that life can be less uncertain and more predictable once more. Waiting for the vaccine rollout to reach us to help make that happen. Waiting is hard. It certainly was for our friend Judy. She and her husband Paul came to work in Malawi for the last few years of their missionary service. Before this, they had spent a long, long time in India. Judy loved it there. She loved the bustle and colour. She loved the rich, deep, ancient culture. She loved the people. She loved her friends and colleagues and work. She loved the pattern of her life and outreach. When she arrived in Malawi, she found it really difficult. We lived in a dry, dusty, isolated rural location, so there wasn't much buzz. Malawian culture was much drabber and less intriguing to her. Most of all, I think Judy struggled because Malawi wasn't India. She felt the loss of all she had enjoyed so deeply. To tell you the truth, she never really settled and towards the end developed a novel way of counting down the days to being able to leave at retirement. If memory serves me right, a hundred days prior to final departure, though it could have been longer, when flights had already been booked, I jest you not, Judy hung 100 numbered sheets of toilet paper on a string. Each morning, she took down the next numbered sheet as a symbolic means of counting down the days. Now, if you feel tempted to emulate Judy as a way to count down to the end of this coronavirus pandemic, let me point out a couple of issues to consider. Firstly, given the way toilet rolls were bought up so quickly at the start of the initial lockdown, you might not want to use something so potentially valuable for such an eccentric scheme. Secondly, and I know you'll have worked this out already, we don't know when the pandemic is going to be over, so we can't even begin to plan a countdown. If coronavirus has taught us anything, it is that we are not as in control of things as we once imagined, and at this stage aren't able to put a fixed, certain, absolute date on our calendars for getting our normal pattern of life back. Circumstances morph and mutate along with the virus. So how then should we wait, without, as we might say, wishing our lives away, as we count down to the uncertain end of this pandemic. I like what Martin Luther King Jr. said. He wonderfully asserted, if I knew I was going to die tomorrow, I would still plant a tree today. That is, irrespective of how daunting tomorrow may be for us as individuals, do the right thing for others and the environment today. St. Paul suggests something similar. He encourages us not to be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, to its self-interest and selfishness, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, to taking the opportunity, even in these hard times, of thinking and acting differently. Building on the image of genuinely working together, he urges us to hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in concerned love, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with those in need, practice hospitality. You know, Judy's toilet paper countdown approach may sometimes be understandable and occasionally appropriate, but because our times are in God's hands, let's mainly try to live tomorrow's life today. Let's keep doing the important things, showing kindness, mercy and compassion, being helpful and a good neighbour in all the ways we can. That's a spirituality which will carry us through this year to the end of the pandemic, whenever that happens and beyond. God bless. Bye for now.